And so you get older, many things mean less. Uh, among them, what people think. And you realize you're responsible to one. You're accountable to others, but you're responsible ultimately to one. And he's the one you need to listen to and follow. Because he's the one that's going to help you when you hit moments like this. Now then, all of this is kind of a preparation for Joel. Okay? Blow the dust off the little book of Joel. Okay? Don't everybody turn at once. Okay, I see little dust pockets coming up from various chairs around here. We're not in Joel very often. We actually know very little about Joel. We know what his name means. And we know his daddy's name. All of that's in verse 1. But here's a man who's ministering in a time of desolation. And you know what's come in? Locusts. They've come in like a swarm and they've devastated the land. You ever seen swarms of locusts? I never had seen them till I was traveling in Southern California, driving back from Mount Hermon back to Southern California. And I pulled over at a, at a service station and I got out and I, I, I stepped out of my car and I, I felt crunch, 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 crunch. And I thought, what on earth is down here? And I looked down where I was going to open my gas cap and they were all over that. And I was like, what is this? And the guy says, oh, the locusts. They, they've come. See the difference? And I looked over here and it was green and fairly lush. And I looked over there and it was white. Stalks. No vegetation. He said, obviously they're moving in this direction. <laughs> and we are right now it was, it was night. He said, we are right now, right in the middle of it. So I suggest when you pull your cap off your gas, get the nozzle in there, in there quick. So I did. But I'd never seen locusts. In fact, they are described for us in verse 4. Look, I'm going somewhere with this, so this isn't a lesson in, in insects. I want you to know that. We're, we're going somewhere. Verse 4, what the gnawing locust has left, the swarming locust has eaten. What the swarming locust has left, the creeping locust has eaten. Look at the growth and in intensity. What the creeping locust has left, the stripping locust has eaten. Wake up, says the prophet. So he's talking to people who are, who, uh, they are going through a time of uh, infestation of these uh, insects. There are gnawing locusts that cut off the leaves and they drop. And there are swarming locusts called literally licking locusts is what the word means. They eat and devour what's dropped so that is even left on the ground. The creeping locust picks up and consumes what remains. And the stripping locusts literally eat the bark off the plant, which leaves them like white stalks. Look at verse 7. It has made my vine a waste and my fig tree splinters. It has stripped them bare and cast them away. Their branches have become white. So you get down to the quick of the, uh, of the stalk and, and it's a whitish appearance. You remember uh, among the uh, plagues that were sent to Egypt were the locusts. Remember that. And the reason they were sent was to, to get Pharaoh's attention because he wouldn't listen to God through the lips of Moses and because he wouldn't obey what Moses told him to do. Same problem now. When we don't listen, or when we listen and don't obey, devastation happens. Verse 12 of chapter 2. Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart. With fasting, weeping, there it is again, weeping, mourning, rend your hearts, not your garments. Return to the Lord your God. In your ministry, you will find yourself in need of returning to the Lord your God. Even though you're faithful in declaring his truth, even though you have not wandered from 
uh, the uh, orthodox position, you will find that you cool off. You go through periods that lack fruitfulness and productivity. And you know that uh, you and the Lord are not on real close speaking terms. And you have to come to terms with that. The Lord, verse 18, then will be zealous for his land, will have pity on his people when you return to him. And the Lord will answer and say to his people, behold, I'm going to send you grain, new wine, and oil. Now you who know the book know where I'm going. It's verse 25. Having done all the things that should have been done, he says then, I will make up to you for the years the swarming locust has eaten. Look at the words make up. From the word shalam, shalam, it means to be complete, sound. It's the idea of entering into a state of wholeness, a restored relationship, according to Harris, Archer, and Walkie. To be complete and sound, to enter into a state of wholeness, a restored relationship. I will help all of that occur. I will make up for you the years that the locusts have eaten. Then he describes them just as earlier, that the swarming locusts, that the creeping locusts, the stripping locusts, and the gnawing locusts, my great army, which I sent among you. You shall have plenty to eat and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord, your God, who has dealt wondrously with you. I love this, that my people will never be put to shame. You don't have to live in shame. You bring your life before the Lord, and he has a marvelous way of helping you go on. John Greenleaf Whittier wrote, of all the sad words of tongue or pen, the saddest are these. It might have been. My words today are designed to keep you from having to ever utter those words when you come toward the end of your ministry. And look back with a sigh and think, oh, it, it, it could have been so much more. The locusts, They've uh, made me barren. I didn't listen. And when I did listen, I didn't. I didn't obey.